have saved my life after skiing. So. Hey guys, um, this is Dave, this is the Tai Shida Podcast, running a little bit late this morning. A um, couple of things on my mind, one is all or nothing, and how that is an utter crock of shite. Very often when I work with people. No. Alright, we'll carry on. Very often when I work with people, helping them to pick up the injury cases, and we're talking about. Excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Um, we get them doing a movement, and that movement seems to be the one that they need to get. A reduction in pain symptoms so they think that that movement is all they'll ever need to do and they're wrong we get people going to the gym or who've taken up fitness and they start doing an exercise that might revolve around a limited number of movements you know they do one sport be that I don't know running or tennis or whatever, a limited number of movements and say, like, okay, well that's all I need to do. Um, we get guys who take up a sport competitively, be that um, kettlebell lifting, jiu-jitsu, and they think, right, kettlebell sport, all they need to do is jerk and snatch. Jiu-jitsu, all you need to do is jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu exercises. And that's wrong. That is wrong. Why? If we lived... Oh, I hate the cliche, I hate the cliche. If we lived as the hunter-gatherer, um, original Homo sapiens type settings, then yes, we'd probably get away with one singular form of training. And the reason we get away with one singular form of training is our active lifestyle would fill in all the other gaps for us. The fact that we would be walking, running, multi-directional movement, climbing trees, sitting, lifting, carrying, throwing, etc. would probably fill in all the gaps and we would not end up with over-specialization issues. But we don't live that lifestyle and I don't give a fuck how much rewilding you do, you ain't gonna live that lifestyle. One of my girls just got in touch. She does five hours a day. Five hours a day on a train commuting to and from work. That's pretty extreme in my book, but... Um, five hours sat on a train to get to work and back. So wait, a two and a half hour each way. <clears throat> um, that's going to leave a, a mark, you know? <coughs> so if she only does it then a one-dimensional sport, it's not a balanced movement experience for the body. You're not getting all joints moving in all dimensions, all three dimensions, frontal, uh, sagittal, frontal, transverse. You don't get all muscles being loaded in all three dimensions, sagittal, from the transverse. So you're not getting the full joint action, muscle loading experience that you're probably hoping for. 
Yeah. The closest single movement I can think of, um, single activity I can think of, would be trail running. And the reason I say trail running is partly confirmation bias. It's a bit of a, you know, it's my absolute favourite type of running. Um, and I used to live in the mountains where you can't not run. But with trail running, you're running, so you use the gait cycle, which does stimulate every joint in all three dimensions, and therefore every muscle in all three dimensions. Not full range minds, but it does stimulate them. And because you're trail running, the ground is inconsistent, therefore every footfall is different. You're not repeating the same movement over and over again, it's slightly different every time. And you've got uphills, downhills, you've got steep hills where you're using your hands and your feet and you're pulling in a climb and scramble a wee bit. So yeah, the trail. Combine trail running with a bit of martial arts and a bit of swimming. You're probably all right. Um, but even still, it's limited thinking, isn't it? Limited thinking. So what I want you to think about. This is going to be a very short podcast today, by the way. I'm just not. Um, I don't know, my head's not quite there. Um, limited thinking does not do you any favours. Um, one of the biggest, most common issues I see, now the source of the issue is, could be anything, but it's a common issue is people's hips don't extend very well so-called glute weaknesses, so-called tight psoas. Um, you could track it down to um, overly pronated feet, flat feet. Um, you could track it to whatever number of reasons. But let's just say the reason is the hip doesn't extend very well because they don't have to, because they're sitting. And I'm not doing a sitting as a new smoking bullshit idea here because again that's limited thinking this is just a for instance and the reason this for instance is really, is really sort of front and center is one of the lads yesterday that i'm working with was telling me how he's doing his goblet squats at home he doesn't train with me directly consults with me more than anything and uh, he videoed himself and he got a lovely 90 degree video from the side and he realised that while he was squatting and he was working out well and he was always going good and he played the video back and he never extended his hip and I was like shit the whole point of the squat is extension and I'm not extending and it's common it's common it's the reason why the hip thrust exercise is actually valuable, although it's a bent leg extension, not a straight leg extension, as would be at the top of a squat or a deadlift. Um, it's one of the reasons why I love the kettlebell swing so much. But again, the kettlebell swing is a single tool with a single, uh, it's not a single purpose. The swing is a, a single movement. It's not all encompassing. So the point of today, the point of today that I'm, I'm trying to labour is, without going into specifics, it's limited thinking does not do you any favours. Doing one exercise for the rest of your life, no good, no good. Um, doing one stretch, one exercise system, no good. Um, you've got to experience variety now. Constantly varied, that's the world of CrossFit. 
even that's not as varied as they like to think. Um, so, you know, real activities, not just gym stuff, not just going to exercise classes. Um, oh, hey, the tag's working again. Um, sorry, I'm just going through the toll gate there. My tag's not been working. And I figured out the reason. The reason is because I've re-registered the car because I live across the border now. And it's got a new bloody reg plate. And it's just been very, very complicated, the whole thing. But anyway, we're back. Single movement, single focus, single intensity. If you're doing, if you're specialising in a sport, then, and this is important guys, and all the top level professional athletes know this, um, it's, it's you poor sort of amateurs, you keen amateurs, you're the guys that can seem to get fucked up the most. Over specialization sucks. Been there. I'm injured because of it. <clears throat> um, what you've got to do is in periods of high competition, yes, you're specialized. Yeah, you do a peaking program going into it, you do the competition, everything revolves around keeping you as fit and healthy for that event. Immediately after that event, you have to do something different. You've got to do other things. Yeah, that's why my kettlebell sport guys have a lot of different exercises that they do or of let's do other things program don't you do it son look in your mirrors he's alright he looked um, my martial arts competitors they do have a larger array of movement, so we tend not to worry so much about them. Um, their strength conditioning training does often take into consideration the specializations of the sport, but even still, I try and encourage them, and these are guys are the worst, they don't listen, do some other stuff, go and do other things. Um, some of them are open, some of them are less open. But those that do, this is a correlation, those that listen and do other things and get out hill walking and do some lifting, some kettlebell swings and deadlifts and chill out a little bit, those that do that get out of that box, explore a few different boxes, they, on average, seem to carry and develop fewer injuries and issues than those that don't. And all I can say here now as a 42 year old Former, well, I've got three black belts, all striking arts. I've trained in a couple of different Japanese grappling arts. I've fell run, hill run, trail run, mountain bike, cycled, <coughs> snowboarded, fought. I've done a fair amount, but a lot of my injuries came from a huge specialization in the striking arts. While not taking that into consideration while doing my running and my cycling, unlike a lot of the fighters, I became very anterior dominant, very weak in the posterior side, and fucked myself up. I'm also slightly stubborn slightly stubborn that's my wife and that stubbornness 
might lead me to maybe not quite pay as much attention to my injuries as I should do. So I might not follow as well-rounded lifestyle as I advocate people. And it's my own fault. What I'm saying here is I'm as bad as you. Well, the difference is no, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Not a difference, is it? I am as fucked up as you are, right? As well, I'm as prone to the same issues as you are. But at least I'm aware, I know, I know. So, here's what I know. Specialization is for insects and athletes. You're not an insect, I hope. All good athletes know, largely because of a coaching team around them, all good athletes know that post event, you do other stuff. Yeah? You do other things. Yeah? If you're a keen amateur athlete and you don't have a coaching team around you, I need you to get this into your head. Do other things. Do not specialize all the time. Let's take the other cliche. Let's take the Pareto principle. Let's do 80% of your specialization, but 20% of your time is doing other shit. As far away from that specialization as possible. All right? Give your body new experiences. The broader the experiences, the greater the movement experience it, 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 it receives, then the greater movement vocabulary it will grant you, the more stimulation goes through the, it's the nervous system really, um, the muscles, the joints and all that are all feeding information into the nervous system, give it lots of information to feed. All right, we're going to wrap up there. That's pretty much all that was on my mind this morning. Um, if you have questions, queries, let me know. I want to hear from you. Talk to me, people. Talk to me. Um, I got a great question yesterday on breathing. Um, I'm just not thinking clearly enough this morning to talk at, at length about that, specific to his question, but we'll get to that. I have other questions on jiu-jitsu training. Um, more on aggression, etc., etc. So, if you have questions, let me know. We'll add them to the list. We'll get to them, um, and I will see you on the Facebook, on the Patreon. Yeah, it's just Facebook.com or patreoncom slash uh, Oh, Facebook is WGMA. Dave. Patreon is Dave Hedges. Lock up Dave Hedges, and I'll see you shortly. This is Dave out.